In today's episode, we're chatting with the marketing mastermind behind the Benji's Dad YouTube channel, a growing blogging empire, and many other endeavors. You do not want to miss this one, so don't you change that dial or drop that phone. We're about to level it up and shatter the mold. Question. In a world where groupthink is the norm, others want what you've earned, and thinking for yourself will get a target painted on your back, how do you flip the script and level up your business, your money, relationships, your health, your status, and your life? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answers. My name is Andrew S. Kaplan, and it's time to shatter the mold. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of Shattered the Mold, Andrew S. Kaplan. Really excited to be here with you today. You know, I haven't said this yet until today's episode, but we are clinching closer and closer to episode number 100 in this podcast. Obviously a significant feat, but really saying a lot because this episode that you're listening to right now in this interview, you should have heard it a lot longer time ago because I actually recorded this interview with Chris uh, probably almost a year ago, and it just basically had one of those things where it found its way sitting on the shelf, not for any good reason, other than I got so overwhelmed by my own publishing schedule and by the fact that I was trying to start up my own YouTube channel that things just got um, really lagging behind, and there's no good reason for that because as you're going to hear in this interview, there is a lot of gold that I've got for you today. Quick little note, this one is so dated in terms of being long overdue that you'll even notice for those watching this in video format that I've got my old background where I was just experimenting with seeing how things are going to look on camera. So um, the video is a little bit choppy. Apologies for that, but um, the audio should be good enough, and, and the video overall should be good enough also. And you know, you don't want to let any of the choppiness stop you from checking this out because Chris threw a lot of value out there in this interview. Uh, with that said, before we get into that, quick update as always regarding my book, The Last Law of Attraction book you'll ever need to read. I continue to be grateful for all the five-star rave reviews, all the emails coming in, let me know how you're using the content, really all the positive goodwill toward the project and the YouTube channel behind that. So thank you so much for everyone for your support with that. Uh, of course, quick reminder, as I've been doing also, you know, really happy to report the press that it's received also, whether it's an article in Yahoo late last year or the articles in USA Today and in Forbes this year as well. If you haven't gotten a copy of the book just yet, you can feel free to check it out by going to lastlawofattractionbook.com. That'll auto forward to the Amazon listing where you can get it in Kindle or paperback or audiobook. Or if you don't want to pull out your wallet and, you know, we're speaking of YouTube here, you can go check out the YouTube channel devoted to it. That's youtube.com slash Andrew Cap. Quick little bit of trivia in that regard, this interview here with Chris, this was basically a beginning part of my own research when I was working on getting my own YouTube channel off the ground. So uh, thank you to Chris for uh, your inspiration and your insight. And again, this one was a long time coming. It shouldn't have taken this long for it to come out, but you know, all good things and all good times. So here we are today. With that said, let's dive in. Chris Miles, also known as Benji's Dad, is the marketing mastermind behind the Benji's Dad YouTube channel a growing blogging empire, and many other endeavors. He teaches people how to consistently make life-changing money online through affiliate marketing. The tools of his trade that we'll be looking most closely at today are his YouTube channel and his blog posts. And the plan today is to glean a lot of insights from his own approach in particular, along with how what he does can work for others as well. With that said, this one again is long overdue, so as I switch up mics here, let's get moving as I introduce my guest of the day. Chris Miles, thank you so much for being here. And welcome to Shattered a Mold. Oh, it's good to be here, Andrew. It's, it's really nice. I appreciate you having me on, man. What you've been providing, I was able to listen to a few of your podcasts. What you're providing now is, is great stuff for the time in which we happen to be living in right now. I really appreciate that, man. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we kind of found each other and that we can do this. Um, because you've got such an interesting story. And I think it really is in line with the times of, you know, people kind of having to think on their feet and bootstrapping and making things work. And, yeah. you know, just, just for clarity, um, you know, one of your brands or one, one of the names you go by is Benji's dad. And in your YouTube channel about that, you kind of have an, an intro where you describe it, but I figured for people that haven't seen you yet, I'd, I'd kind of give you the floor, like what inspired that and, and where did you take that and why did you go with that? Well, uh, pretty much, I've always been somewhat of a serial entrepreneur, always trying to come up with new ways to earn an income. Uh, but I've tried so many things. I've DJed on the side. I've also tried buying and selling computers and, and clothing on an eBay store or even going door to door selling chocolate, you know, when I was in, when I was in school, you know, those kinds of things. I was always trying to find a way to make a few extra dollars. 
Um, and uh, like I said, not a lot of them actually panned out as much as I would have liked them to. But then uh, got married and then eventually realized that we were going to have our first uh, child. And uh, my wife, or Benji's mom, I like to call her, she wanted to uh, quit her job. And at the time, you know, we didn't necessarily have the funds to do it. We didn't necessarily have the means to do it. But uh, I, I kind of said no, you know, and then after a while, she kind of just sat me down and was like, you need to figure this out. So the kind of the pressure was on me and I kind of had to, to find a way. So then I started looking around online to try to find different ways that I can earn an income from home that didn't require like a ton of time or didn't require a ton of uh, dedication in order for, you know, so I wouldn't have to leave the house all the time. I could still be home with my new son, still be home with my wife and kind of thing. So I eventually got into blogging. Uh, when I first did it, I didn't take it seriously. I kind of just tried it out. But when the family thing was the one that was pushing me, then I realized that, okay, I need to actually invest in some decent training and, and, and do it. So I bought a nice train that was really not that expensive, like 19 bucks. And it was basically a step-by-step -step guide on how to build an online business through blogging specifically. So I started with that and uh, I made my first commission about eight weeks in, uh, like $23 and 50 cents or so. And uh, when that happened, it kind of like clicked that I just created basically something out of nothing and it generated an income, it generated money. So that kind of, it blew my mind and I was like, okay, if I could do this once, I can do it, I should be able to do it 10 times or a hundred times or a thousand times. And that's kind of when I started kind of doubling down on it. Later, uh, about eight or nine months into it, I started uh, doing YouTube as well. And uh, just to kind of, for the SEO or the search engine optimization benefits of it, so that my blog would show up better in Google rankings. Um, and then I realized that I didn't want to use anybody else's video because if I put their video in my blog post and that video has its own agendas. So I was like, okay, well, let's just make a nice, simple video, just summarizing the blog post, but it's me, you know, and then I can direct people to where I want them to go. So I started doing that a little bit and realized that the video for getting better traction or maybe faster traction, I should say, than the blog was. So then I kind of made a fundamental shift and started creating more videos with an accompanying blog post than the other way around. And the rest is really history at that point. Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. And, and by the way, you're right now, between the two of us, you're the blogging expert and you're the YouTube expert, although I'm gonna be diving into YouTube myself at some point, hopefully within the next month, once I get some, some tech going. But my first thought when I heard about you was like, wow, I, like what's Chris doing on blogging? Like instead of putting all his energy into YouTube, because I'm coming from the assumption that there's so much more momentum and an upward trajectory. And I guess I, I'd leave it to you to correct me if I'm wrong about that. Well, no, the, the problem, there, there is no problem. The thing is Google is Google. It's the number one search mm. engine on the planet and it's owned by, uh, and sorry, Google owns YouTube, which is the second biggest search engine on the planet. Uh, and the reach that those platforms have is insane. Uh, it, it's ridiculous. I believe YouTube has over 2 billion active users per month. So the growth and people watching video and the, the internet is making a fundamental shift to video online. So mm -hmm. it might seem as though, yeah, go all in on YouTube. But the only problem with it is that when you go to your channel, my channel is youtube.com slash my channel, right? So YouTube, in essence, owns my audience. They own my uh, uh, my my channel, and if I if for whatever reason they decided they didn't like me one day and just turned off my channel, everything mm -hmm. would be gone and I would have nothing to show for it. So the good thing about a blog is that I purchased the domain, I purchased the hosting for that blog. It's mine. No matter what happens, no matter what algorithm update that might occur on Google, no matter what algorithm update happens on on YouTube or whatever happens to be at the end of the day, it's my website and I can direct traffic to there no matter what medium I'm getting people from whether it's YouTube mm -hmm. or whether it's a podcast or you know whether it's live or whatever it happens to be I have somewhere I can send people and collect information from them so that I can further market to them in the future nice got it I love it man and you said that this started off a $19 course yeah there was a uh a blogging course that I invested in. And to be honest, at the time, $19 was a lot of money because I was all on top of needing to create some income for the family. Mm -hmm. I was also in about $30,000 worth of debt. 
uh, credit card debt, like high interest, bad. It was the worst that you could possibly be in. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and I had carried it mm-hmm. for such a long time that it was something that I just kind of, you know, just life happens and you start charging stuff up and all of a sudden it's there and all you can do is make the monthly payments on it, you know, and I carried that for a long time. And because of that, I went ahead and just uh, started with the channel. And as things grew, I was able to finally pay those things off. So now, for the most part, outside of my mortgage, I'm pretty much debt free from the, the business that I've been able to, to generate. Nice. Congrats, man. That's awesome. I love it. Um, so as I understand it, <laughs> you've got a, a system. You're kind of like, they, like to, whether to blogging or to YouTube or to both, and I'll let you clarify that, but you've got a, a system that you follow that's predictably getting you this really healthy revenue stream. Is that a fair way to put it? Oh, yeah, it's 100%. 100%. Cool. So how much, like, how much could you describe that now? Like, is it, is it a simple, like five-step deal or is it get complicated? It's relatively simple. If I give you like the 30,000 foot overview of how it works, it's a pretty simple, what's called a funnel. Um, mm-hmm. But if you really think about it, it's the same marketing principles that a store uses. It's just done digitally. Right. And because of that, you're able to convert a cold lead into a paying customer. And you mm-hmm. try to do that as many times as you possibly can. So uh, did you want me to go over the, the process right quickly? If you don't mind, man, like anything you're, yeah, certainly. like I don't want to give away a, a proprietary thing, but anything you're willing to share, I'm sure the audience would get a lot of value. Oh, well, I'm, I give away everything. So if you ask, I'll cool. probably tell you. <laughs> so don't yeah, worry well, about that. <laughs> let, let's get these guys some making some money in that case, man. Whatever you're good sharing, I'm, I'm game. Okay, all right, well, good. So if we were to use a blog for an example, um, blog is where the people are, uh, or Google is where the people are, YouTube is where the people are, or Facebook, whatever your, what's called a traffic source, whatever your medium happens to be, you want to go out into that landscape and create valuable content regarding that, regarding any particular, uh, what's called a niche, or an interest, or a topic, or something of that nature. So, for example, um, one thing that I like to always use is golf, okay? I just took up golfing recently, and it's really fun. I really do enjoy it. But I've always, I've always enjoyed it, but I've never been able to do much with it because it's kind of an expensive sport, you know, when you mm-hmm. really think about it. So what I've decided to do is um, I'm starting a blog on golfing. So as I learn golfing, I'm going to be translating that into blog posts, helpful blog posts, helpful YouTube videos, so that people who are in the same spot as me, people who are just getting started in the golf, in the golfing niche, are gonna wanna, are gonna go through the same things that I'm going through right now, which means I can create helpful content for them uh, as I go through it. So as long as I'm like a few steps ahead of the people who are just getting into golfing, then I'm always going to be, you know, uh, an influencer of sorts, even though I don't like that word, but an influencer of sorts to where, because I'm a few steps ahead. Um, one of the examples that I like to use is uh, of Frank Abagnale. He's the catch me if you can guy uh, yeah. that was, that was portrayed in the movie. And one of the things that he did, because he was a con artist, and one of the things that he did was uh, he, he uh, had a social advanced sociology course uh, not course, but advanced sociology class that he actually taught for an entire semester. And the students had no idea that he wasn't a, a real professor. Hmm. And when the FBI finally called him and they asked him about it, he said, well, all I had to do is just stay one chapter ahead of the students. Mm. And all of a sudden, it mm-hmm. makes perfect sense. So you don't have to necessarily be an expert because the chances are the experts don't want to teach. They just want to keep doing right. it. You know, so as long as you know a little bit more than the people who are a few steps behind you, then you're always going to have an audience that you can market to. And that's mm-hmm. how the process kind of works. You create valuable content. So uh, I remember I was out on the golf course and I always wonder, why do people have these golf towels? Why are these golf? T- why does I see golf towels attached to everybody's uh, everybody's golf cases um, or golf, golf bags? And after I hit a few. I realized that I was getting my clubs dirty and I was wiping them off with my hands and now my hands were getting dirty. And I realized you know, <laughs> that's why they have those golf things. But that's right. a question that I didn't know before. And I'm like, why, is it, why do they have this? So that's, if I have that question, chances are other people have that question as well. So I mm. create content that helps people with that question. And now in that blog post, it's very important that you give them the answer. You don't string them along. You don't have them read the whole article or watch the entire video just for you to throw the answer in in the last 30 seconds. 
one thing that I like mm-hmm. to do is give the answer up front right there and then try your best to come up with a nice hook to keep them watching as you continue diving deeper into the subject, right? That is do that's that, so interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, I'm sorry, keep talking, man. You're, you're giving so, me a good point. So when you do that, you end up building trust with the people who are watching you and they realize that, hey, this guy isn't out there just trying to make a quick buck. He's actually trying to help me. And as people see that, then at the end of my article, I'm going to have some type of uh, call to action or CTA basically mm-hmm. saying, hey, by the way, this is the golf towel that I used that I went ahead and bought. I did a little bit of research. If you want to go check it out, you know, here's the link to the review where on my site, I did a review on my golf towel because of my experience. I actually have good pictures that I took of the golf towel and, you know, I have it on the website. So then people read my review. The review has the affiliate links in it to go to Amazon or to go to uh, TaylorMade or wherever it is I got the actual uh, towel from. And if they go and make a purchase, then I get a commission from the sale. So that's basically how it is. You can use that entire process anywhere. There are people. And all you have to do is create content that attracts those people, which is called attraction marketing, which is the best kind of marketing, in my opinion works well rather than always having to go out and get people you create a valuable resource to have people find you chris i want to highlight what i mean first of all people that are really studied kind of like notice and they realize how brilliant this is but i want to highlight something specific that you said that was kind of new to me i just i'd never thought of it before and that's an idea of giving them the instant gratification and the satisfaction within the first 30 seconds as opposed to later now like me my mentality is I'm not going to wait make somebody sit through like a 45 or hour long video to get the answer, but like a five minute video, I'm personally comfortable waiting, making them wait four or five minutes, but I hear what you say. And I'm like, wait, that's a better idea. You give them the instant gratification, but then you have another hook, which is doubling as extra value, keeping them curious and also reinforcing the fact that they can learn more from you, keeping them engaged and also conditioning them to watch your whole video because they know that they're going to get more than just their answer. I think that's brilliant. Yeah, and it's it's the greatest way to be because in in the online world, especially within recent years has gotten really spammy. People are out there realizing that, hey, I can make a ton of money just by creating content. So I'm just gonna create anything, right? And just throw it out there. And in the past that worked, you know, in the past people would listen to whatever was out there. When YouTube was Mm -hmm. just getting started, people were just throwing stuff out there and seeing what stuck. And it was able to generate a, a lot of money for people. But nowadays what's happening is that quality is starting to trump the quantity. Right. Mm -hmm. And as a result, if you do your best to create something that is worthy of being there, creating the best piece of content that is out there on a particular subject, it's going to take a little bit. But eventually you're going to the cream rises to the top and you're going to be right there because you are the most helpful resource. And the thing is, there's so many resources online that has, you know, crappy (laughs) results. And all you have to do is go out there and create something that's better. Mm hmm. I love it. Now, you use golf as a perfect example and as a relevant example. I'm wondering, like, how many niches are you in right now? As of right now, I probably have maybe six active websites that I update, um, some of which I have uh, contracted out where I have other people writing the content for it, and then I just post it and Mm -hmm. uh, just try to keep it going. I mean, I'm only one person, so you only do so much. So yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. that was my next question, actually, is like, okay, I'm gonna ask Chris how many he's got and like how much he's doing for all of them, because you you ultimate you almost become like a a manager of source, uh, where you're kind of overseeing other people making sure the content is legit, but not, you know, you're only you're one person, like you said, you only have so much bandwidth, you can't be a bottleneck. So you end up having to alter your skills as an entrepreneur whereas in the beginning you were perfecting that skill of just the funnel and now you have to step it up a notch and perfect the skill of managing and distributing those resources while maintaining the quality exactly yeah one thing andrew that i like about entrepreneurship is that it really puts you in touch with your income streams you know when you are working the regular nine to five job which i was doing you know just a couple years ago working the nine to five you realize that you know, if if you put so much into your nine to five, because you're you're not just working eight hours. I remember when I was going, I was gone 
12, 15 hours a day because of commuting and then because of lunch and because of this or that. That's a lot of time that you're devoting to something that you're only getting paid eight hours for, you know, but when it comes to, and if that were to go away, that's your income, your main income source. And most people don't have secondary income sources. But as an entrepreneur, one thing that I've realized is that, okay, if my income from blogging disappeared, what am I going to do? So what I end up doing is uh, making sure that you have multiple income streams. And then as the income mm -hmm. streams are coming in, if one dies, you have two or three others that are propping you up or more that are propping you up that you can now work on a way to build the other one. So uh, I bring all of that up because that's what scaling is, being able to scale the business and being able to uh, continue earning income. Uh, one good thing about blogging, one good thing about YouTube is that after you have created enough resource, uh, they start to rank and they stay there for a long, long time, which means mm. if I can build a website up to $5,000 a month, it's not going to immediately stop making money. As long as the, good, the content is good, it's not going to immediately stop making money like one month. It just typically kind of wanes over time, maybe over the course of a year, maybe over the course of a couple of years, if I were mm. to just leave it alone. <clears throat> So now I can build up a three to $5,000 income stream over here. And now I have time to go concentrate on something else and build up another one and then build up another and the one. Best, and then the time and the best part is your, compounds. Yeah. And the best part is you're tracking that. So if you see it start to wane a little bit, that's a good indicator. Like, let me pour a little more energy to keep the fire. Let me throw a little more fuel on this fire and keep it going a little bit more. That's the goal. It doesn't always happen. <laughs> for, mm. for, like, see, one of my, one of my first uh, blogs that I started was on luxury watches. And I was able to build it up to, this was my first one, I was able to build it up to a few hundred bucks a month. And uh, right now, even today, it still generates about four to 500 bucks a month, you know, and nice. I don't really do much to it. I haven't touched it in probably two years, you know, and that's, it, it ranks for some really good keywords that people are finding and they're, they're going through. With the, uh, recently, uh, Amazon made a change to their uh, income structure or uh, affiliate structure. So a lot of their percentages dropped. So actually, mm -hmm. I'm going to find out toward the end of the month what happened with the income for that site. So we'll I see. I heard about that. that. <laughs> I heard yeah. about that. Oh, I'm, um, yeah, I don't like Amazon anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how we like or not like someone as soon as, like, depending on how well they're doing for us, right? Um, yeah, that's true. So how much, how much are you, you know, producing? <laughs> exactly. So you know, here you are, it seems like, you know, you're, you're on a nice long winding journey here. You're learning as you go, things are happening. I'm curious to this point, what's been your biggest challenge and assuming you've solved it or addressed it, how have you done that? A uh, challenge would be uh, sticking to something, something that is very difficult in the entrepreneur world or online world is the fact that there's so many ways in which you can, so many opportunities that are out there to earn an income that if you don't stick to one, you'll end up having 50 half done projects. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing that you want. Um, so I've had to kind of increase my project management skills, you know, and being able to compartmentalize, work on this one day, work on this the next day, uh, more time management, making sure that everything is, is moving at a steady pace you know, that's probably the, one of the hardest things that it is for me because I love to try and I love to, to be honest, to be honest I love to fail. I love to try it and see that it didn't work. Uh, Thomas Edison mm -hmm. used to say <clears throat> that, um, you know, he didn't, he's never failed. He just found 10,000 ways that didn't work. Right? right. So that's kind of the way that I learn um, when people ask me questions about how to blog and I can immediately come up with an answer or maybe something they need to change on a YouTube video in order to get it to 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 do better, to have a higher retention or whatever it happens to be. I can come up really re come up with the answers really quick. And sometimes mm -hmm. they ask, well, how do you do it? You know, how do you understand it so quickly? How do you know? It? And most times, nine times out of 10, it's because I went through it myself and I remember how I failed and what didn't work. And now I know what works. Right. So it's all about failing forward. Just throw something out there. If it doesn't work, at least you learn from the experience and you won't make the same mistake twice. Got it. Got it. Cool. So we have obviously, you know, so many different types of people listening to this, so many different motivations, so many different people receiving this in a certain way. So I'm going to ask you to generalize in this next question, but what would be your advice to someone that's about to launch a YouTube channel? to help them, you know, whether it's building the right foundation or getting it successful quickly, like what are the top tips you can give without even knowing what they're gonna do exactly? 
Well, the first thing is, if you're going to create a YouTube channel or a blog or any type of space that you're going to jump into, uh, you need to understand that at first, your love can't be about the money that you're going to earn. Because early on, you're going to be preaching to a ghost town. Like, there's not going to be anyone there. No one's going to be watching your videos. And it's not because the videos uh, may not be good. It's just because nobody knows you exist, mm -hmm. right? Nobody knows that this channel is even there. It's going to take time for these uh, traffic sources to surface your content. So for a long time, you might create content for a few months, maybe even a year or more, and have a very little, you know, to show for it. You might only have a few bucks that you've earned from it. So my number one tip to people would be, you know, don't have money as your primary motivation. For me personally, uh, of course, we all want to make money. You know, we're not just doing this, you know, just for our health for the most part. We're doing it because we want to make some money with it. But if I had, in my personal experience, I had a, a motivation to provide for my family. So when things weren't working, when I saw other people who were having success that I knew I was smarter than those guys, <laughs> mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I just need to keep pushing forward and eventually it's going to pop. And that's right. what happened. Um, they have what's called the hockey stick curve. So if you're looking at a graph, it starts mm -hmm. off really, really low. And then eventually it just skyrockets because creating content um, on YouTube or a blog has a cumulative effect over time. Every time you create a piece of content, you're creating a little version of yourself that can talk 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that's mm -hmm. the way that you want a business to run. Warren Buffett used to always say, if you can't find a way to make money while you sleep, you're going to work until you die. And I have a firm believer in that. So I, I create income sources that can work without me having to actively work on it in the moment. Right. Oh, awesome. Um, so that's a great uh, philosophical I mean, I don't know if philosophical is the right word, but it's, a, it's wonderful advice. I'm wondering, is there any tactical advice that you might have to share with somebody? Yeah, so the one thing that has really blown up my business, and I remember when I wasn't, when I was earning income, but I wasn't earning as much as I wanted. Uh, what I was able to do was start an email list in my particular space. Mm -hmm. So starting an email list is huge because we mentioned earlier, YouTube for the most part owns your audience you know and even if you were to be on facebook if you had a nice facebook group with a lot of people in it that you can talk to about a particular subject if you were to create a blog post only so many people are going to see it right i have over forty thousand subscribers on my youtube channel but when i create a video only about 10 to 20 percent of my audience actually sees that mm -hmm. video and you're like, so why is that the case? If I have 40,000 subscribers and I create a video, I should get at least 40,000 views, right? They all subscribe to me. But no, that's not how the process works. You have to remember that YouTube has their own agenda. Um, mm. They want to make sure that people stay on YouTube for as long as possible. And if your content doesn't draw people to YouTube because maybe it's, it's too specific about your topic, it's not a a rah-rah topic that everybody wants to talk about, YouTube may not push it to as many people as you would like. Mm -hmm. So what you can do to, to counteract that is to build an email list. If you have an email list, no matter what happens, you send an email, you're going to send an email to each one of those people. Now, whether they answer it or open it or not, is another question. You want to make sure that you have good uh, titles for your emails and whatnot. But the fact that you have an email list that is yours, that nobody can take away, I can send an email to you know, I have a list that has around 10,000 people on it. I can send an email to 10,000 people and have instant traffic to any of my sources that I want at any moment. And that's a powerful thing there. Uh, mm -hmm. I know people who have an email, a email list of over 100,000 people. And anytime they have a new offer or something that that particular, uh, uh, that their list would be interested in, they mm -hmm. send the email out and they can instantly make money just by sending a couple of emails. And that's right. powerful. So the one thing I would definitely recommend for anybody, the tactical thing is to build an email list as soon as you possibly can. Mm. Uh, curious, how often do you email your list? When, I, when someone first signs up for, for an email list, depending on the niche, all right? Mm -hmm. Some niches you don't have to email as often. Other niches you have to email too much almost. Um, right. And so I have a, a blogging course and when people uh, join the blogging course, uh, they're going to get an email every day for like the first two weeks or so. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, it then it trails to about every other day, then every three days and then every four. So it's like a nice long 
you know, uh, maybe month long process that people go through uh, for that for that particular space. But then um, I'm building up the golfing blog that I was telling you about earlier. Um, I'm going to be building an email list for it, but I'm probably only going to email people maybe twice a week if that. Got it. Got because it. you don't necessarily need to to bombard you know people in in hobby niches because they already have a million other things going on yeah you, you want them used to hearing from you but you don't want to beat them over the head and keep trying to sell them something day after day after day exactly because the number one thing is providing value you need to provide right. value first and you need to uh you need to provide you have to give 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 and then i wouldn't even say take but you want to give and then ask you know mm. you want to provide provide a, a valuable resource for what you whatever it is that you happen to be talking about but then after you've done that a few times now hey why don't you go check out this affiliate product why don't you go check out my info product that i just created you mm -hmm. know and then you're going to see the what's called the, the reciprocity principle you know people are going to reciprocate what it is that, that that you're providing so as long as you give way more than you take or that you ask for then you're going to end up on you know the positive side you're going to end up in the black making an income love it does so my brain's kind of popping my head like does this show that we're recording right here <clears throat> is this something that you will be emailing to certain lists as a just a value just a value gift to them or does oh, it not fit in with what you know yeah 100 percent um that's mm -hmm. what i have well, that's what i have been doing anytime i uh if i'm somewhere outside of my usual mediums like mm -hmm. blogging or youtube i like to let my list know um i like to uh put it out there on uh what's called community posts on YouTube mm -hmm. where people just it's like an image or something and you just say hey I'm over here so why don't you go check it out uh, I find that I do that with people that I follow online I like to see what they're doing everywhere so then I get a little more insight because you know right. YouTube videos are structured and they're a certain way and they're really pointed toward uh, uh, answering a particular question you know to try to be helpful it doesn't always get deep insight as to Oh, what's Chris really thinking, you know, or what's right. really going, you know, what's really going on in his life? Oh, I didn't know that happened to him. <laughs> and what that does is just, it helps build branding. It's, it's a big brand builder and shows that, you know, I'm a regular person. I'm not just this, you know, personality that just happens to exist in, in the YouTube landscape. Yeah. And, you know, maybe I think I love hearing that because I think also, and you know this better than, than me, just because you're a current YouTuber, there's a lot of lurkers. So <clears throat> there are people that yeah. don't even um subscribe to you that watch you but by that same token there are people on your list that you never would think would would be interested to hear these things about you and by by sharing this you might be inspiring them and giving them a business idea that they never would have thought of or you just like yeah. giving them something like positive to consume in their day and there's there's so much value to doing that yeah definitely um i can't tell you if i well, i can't tell, i guess if i you when you look at my analytics uh, for my YouTube channel specifically, 70 or so, maybe 75% of my audience is not even subscribed to me. Mm -hmm. right? And that's, that's a crazy thought when you think about it. I'll create a video, it'll get 10,000 views, and 70% of those people <laughs> are not even subscribed to me. So what that tells me is that I should always be creating content that appeals to a mass audience of people, especially mm -hmm. early on. But it also tells me that sometimes people are going to be watching your videos, like you say, but they aren't subscribing. Um, and I realized I did that some. Oh, this is a cool video. And then all of a sudden, YouTube suggested to me again, or a different video from the same channel. And then I watch it again. And I watch another one, and then I watch another one. All of a sudden, YouTube sees that, oh, you like this channel. We're going to keep giving you content from it. Mm -hmm. It might be 10 videos in until I realize I'm not even subscribed to them. You know, that's, that's how good the YouTube algorithm works. <laughs> it makes you think you're subscribed to something when you really aren't. But uh, that's, a, that's a big deal because people will end up following you. I can't tell you how many times someone has sent me an email and say, Chris, I've been following you for months. I've been following you for over a year now. And I'm finally going to make a move, you know, kind of a thing. And that's, that's huge to me because it helps, show, it helps them show you that you are being consistent with your content creation, that you're not just a fly by night. You're, this isn't something that's just popping up once and you're just trying to get a quick payday. You're actually right. here for the long haul. You're going to be creating content for a long time and you're going to actually try to help me with what it is I'm trying to do. 
I'm going to be honest, when I was looking at your podcast, the first thing I looked at was, okay, how long has he been doing this? You know, has he been doing it for a couple of weeks? Has he been doing it for a couple of years? And when mm-hmm. I thought that you've been around, was that 18, 2019 or so when you started mm-hmm. the podcast? Yeah, yeah, 50, I think a little over 50 episodes. Yep. Okay, th- this guy knows what he's doing. I'm just going to be a little cog in his wheel, you know, <laughs> it just moving <laughs> on. And uh, I, that's just one thing that you kind of naturally do that you don't even realize. So being there and being consistent is really one of the best ways to build an audience on any platform. I love it. And uh, I'm putting pressure on myself to release this in a timely manner by announcing right now. So when people look like, oh, Andrew actually got this out on time. Right now, you're on the cusp of 43,000 YouTube subscribers. And yeah. I wanted to share with you as a point of, int- of, of interest that you might find intriguing and that you people my audience and people you send this to will find this intriguing is I, a couple of weeks ago, spoke with another YouTuber who has a lit, has subscribers about like 10 times as many as you. And they mm-hmm. report the same thing. 70% are yeah. subscribers. So this makes me wonder now, is this for the most part an across the board kind of thing? Also being like a glimmer of hope. If someone's like stuck at a thousand subscribers, like, no, you got like 10,000 people or, you know, 8,000 people like watching, not a thousand as a good thing, as a reminder to keep going and keep pushing forward. Always, always, because you got to remember, you have to work with YouTube, you have to work with Google, work with with whatever platform uh, that's that you're working on, work mm-hmm. with them. By doing that, then they're going to push your content, right? You're going to push it to as many people as you possibly can. So if your content is helpful, or it's out of this world, or it's very interesting, or people just have to watch it because of what's going on then that content is going to be pushed to what's called your non-audience right people who aren't necessarily who don't know who you are but they would be interested in the topic in which you're discussing um the problem that you have there sometimes is that that kind of creates an atmosphere where youtubers will sell out on particular types of content just Mm. for the views Mm. and the problem there is that you end up not having as pure an audience as you really want. Uh, You have an audience that's interested in a whole bunch of stuff rather than just one, which actually makes it very hard to market to them. Right. Um, Yeah. Because you'll you'll put, you'll put an affiliate link to a cool radio, but only like 5% of the audience even cares about getting a new radio versus someone that's really into a topic. Exactly. Because of that one video about radios you happen to make just because YouTube was liking radios that day, you know, that's not what you want to do because that is, it's going to segment your audience. It's going to give you nice vanity numbers. Like to me, subscribers is a vanity number. It just shows you, oh, great. Now I have X number of subscribers that must you know, qualify me. But I know people who have, I've seen videos of uh, YouTubers who have a million subscribers and they can't even pay their rent. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, how is that the case? You know, I have a smaller number of, uh, of subscribers than a lot of big YouTubers out there, you know, I'm not even going to lie or anything. That, that's that's the, the fact. But I have a very engaged audience, you know, mm-hmm. so I create, so I have slower growth, but I have a more engaged audience. And that's what I'd rather have than a yes. huge audience that can really care less about what I'm doing. Yes. There, there was a, an article that came out. I, I, I feel bad for not, you're good with quotes. I hear you, you, you quote different people. I'm like, uh, Chris is on this. He really studies from people. I, I also try to learn, but I never attribute the right person to the right quotes. So I have to uh, apologize to this person. I do know that Tim Ferriss shared this article about this guy who was saying like, all you need is a thousand true customers or true yeah. fans. And that is all you will ever need to, to be successful. Yeah, you're actually, it's funny you mentioned that because you're actually referring to Kevin Kelly. That's the, Thank you. That's the guy there. Thank you, Chris. So, Basically, Kevin Kelly was saying, he says, if you find a thousand people to, to buy something, to invest in something where you get a hundred dollars as, as a kickback, mm-hmm. then you're going to, then you can make a hundred thousand dollars. And in the grand scheme of things, there's 4 billion people who have access to Google. You know, we were talked about it earlier, 2 billion active users on YouTube per month. And you're telling me I only need a thousand people to make a hundred thousand dollars? It's, it's, it's almost mind boggling, right? Mm-hmm. I'm sure you can look at your, uh, your downloads as they increase as your podcast, you know, builds authority and becomes a huge podcast from when you first started. And then you think, wow, I can't believe that, you know, these numbers are going up. And then as the numbers go up, you realize that man, you're having an influence on so many more people. 
So right. if you ever decided to create an info product, if you ever decide to push some type of a uh, product that would help your audience, that would truly help your audience, not just to make a quick buck, but something mm-hmm. that could add value to your audience and you made a hundred dollars from it. If you had a thousand people, you made a hundred grand. If you regularly have 5,000 people download, if you if I regularly have 5,000 people watching videos or whatever it happens to be, and I release a product where I make a hundred thousand dollars, all of a sudden I made $500,000 right. within, you know, it, it took a while to build up, but the fact that it happened shows that it's possible and it's just a numbers game at the end of the day. Yeah, it's and it's funny because like for me it's such a strange thing because when I started this podcast, it was kind of in support of a book that's on brand with the podcast. It's called "It Doesn't Matter What You're Selling." And last year, near the end of it, I decided, you know what? Because I'm preaching to people, why don't I practice what I preach and let me pick a market that I actually care about and do something with? So, um, I, you know, it'll be here probably in the intro for the show. But like, I wrote this thing called "The Last Law of Attraction" book you'll ever need to read. Yeah, and I heard that. that. Dude, if you, and by the way, I can't lie. You could go on Amazon and you could look at the sales ranking difference between that one and the old one. And obviously I'm putting a lot more time, energy and effort and care into it, but it's an unbelievable difference. It's like people that don't, people buy that book. They have no idea about Shatter the Mold. They have no, and because there's an Andrew Kaplan who writes books, I had to shorten my name to Andrew Kaplan. There are people that really, they have no idea that I do a podcast or any of this stuff. It's, it's such a weird, wacky thing to think about, but I, I'm bringing that because I love what you say, because it's clear to me that you care about impact. Obviously, you know, Benji's dad, we want to make sure that his college tuition is taken care of, but you <laughs> understand through that, it's the impact that gets you there. And it's the impact that helps people and serves people. And that's going to end up, you know, really, if we do care about money. That's where the money's going to come from. Not a quick, cheap buck, but a buck that's based on value and based on care and based on actually investing in the audience so that they know to invest back in you. Yes. Oh, God, I, I, <laughs> I totally agree with that. One of my first jobs, Andrew, was a telemarketer. I was in, you know, one of these little call centers. We had, I, was a, I was an operator standing by for these really, mm. uh, you know, right, late, right. late nights, rotisserie gold or whatever you want to call these things. Right. I was, that's who I was. Right. And one of the things that he tried to drill into us is it was called the WIIFM principle. What's in it for me? Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, people just want to know how can you help them, you know. Un- unfortunately, people inherently are just selfish. <laughs> they want to know, okay, well, how is this going to help me? How- are you going to give me entertainment? Are you going to give me education? What is it that you have that's going to benefit me in my life right now? So that's the way you have to think about it. When you, create, when you created that, that, uh, the book, that's something that's going to draw a wide range of people. And then as they dive deeper, they're going to say, oh, he has a podcast. I can actually listen to him regularly now, you know, and it's the same difference with me. Uh, if you have a book or if you have a course, it, it shows you have authority. Um, one guy on YouTube, Dan Locke, it's funny. He used to say that uh, he wrote a book just for the fact that he didn't want to give people business cards. And I was, <laughs> so, so if he wow. met somebody brand new, if he was on a plane and he starts, strikes up a conversation and then he says, hey, maybe you want to work with me. Here's my card. He didn't want to do that. He wanted to say, here's my book. Wow. And then, because that automatically gives you authority. Oh, this guy wrote a book. He must really know what he's talking about. You know, and in my experience, I've noticed that creating courses are the same way. If you can create a course, oh, he has a course on it. Oh, that means he really must know how to do it. Let me listen to this guy. You know, Mm. so that's one thing that I've definitely been kind of holding true is to try to create as much value as possible with the biggest net I can but still getting people who are interested. Um, You know, when you find someone who wants to buy your book and they don't know that your podcast exists, the people who actually dive deeper are the ones you want to work with. You Mm -hmm. know, those are the ones you want to work with because they're actually a little more invested than a passerby who just happens to buy your book because they like the cover. (laughs) You (laughs) You have to keep those things in mind. Keep your audience pure. You can't, if you try to market to everybody, you end up marketing to nobody. Yes. Oh, I love that. I love that. Now you, you brought up course. I want to make sure I'm clear on this. You have a course that is out or is about to come out? It's actually in production right now. It'll probably be out in, uh, by the end of this month. Nice. So, and what's, what's it specifically go into? Uh, well, this one is going to show you how to build a blog from scratch. So if you don't know what a blog is, you've never blogged a day in your life, 
this is by the time you're done with this course, you're going to be earning money with a blog. That's the whole goal of the blog. And even if you have no idea, you're a complete beginner, I walk you through literally step by step. Uh, in, the, in the past, I've done what's called affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is, and I still do it. I shouldn't say in the past I've done it, but I still do affiliate marketing. But the one thing about affiliate marketing is if a business that you promote heavily kind of changes their philosophy on life or philosophy on their business or whatever, and you have a lot of content that's pointing to that affiliate product, all of a sudden people might start asking you, oh, you still support them and yada, yada, you know, and you got the weird thing that's weird things like that happen. So one way around that is to create courses that you yourself prescribe to, you know, so I, I know that my values, my integrity isn't going to change, you know, because it's me, you know, it doesn't even make sense. So when I, I'm going to, I'm creating something that if something gets outdated after a while, I'm going to update it to make sure that it's 100% accurate for even the new people that are going to be coming in a year from now, two years from now, you know, and by doing that, you end up making, uh, earning more money as well, because instead of getting a percentage of the commission, or a percentage of the sale, I should say, you get 100% of the sale, which mm -hmm. means I can pour more money into marketing, which means I can pour more money into making the course just freaking awesome, you know? And that's what the goal is, is to create a, a, an amazing resource for people who are looking to do something and they've heard of blogging, but, or maybe they've tried blogging and weren't successful with it, but I'm gonna give them the step-by-step -step process that I use that allowed me to create blogs and sell them for huge amounts of money. Right. Now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong here. Obviously, you'll announce this on your blogging website. And let me, and let me know if I got the wrong one here, but I have benjisdad.com. That's the best way for people to find out about you, yes? Um, that's, that's one of them. Uh, okay. Probably the better way would be the YouTube channel because that's mm -hmm. where, I, where I put um, – so just search Benji's Dad, uh, B-E-N-J-I, because my son's name's Benjamin. Um, Benji's Dad on YouTube, and you're going to see a ton of content that you can – it's going to help you, you know, start a blog, really, or at least kind of break out of the, or shatter the mold, I should say, <laughs> of your, um, the nine to five and realize that, oh, I can earn an income outside of just working. Um, and the name of the, the new blog course, if you don't mind me throwing it out there. No, no, like, people, people are going to be curious. Let's let them know about it, right? <laughs> so uh, the new blog course is called blogbuilderpro.net. Oh, so it's blog up. Awesome. Oh yeah, the site's already up. I'm already collecting emails. You see, ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> so give me, give me that, uh, that URL one more time, please. Blogbuilderpro.net. Awesome. And so the name you know, of the course is Blog Builder Pro. I love that. And you know, for my the main page on on my uh, podcast, I always put these links. So people that go to shatteredonthepodcast.com, if they didn't, un if I mean, you were pretty clear, but they can always go there, and it'll have all the links for them as well. So. Um, one awesome. way or another people will be able to find out. I think that's awesome. I'm very intrigued. Um, like for me, it's like, I see YouTube, YouTube is a big thing for me, but I can hear in what you're talking about, there's more impact to blogs than I might have realized in 2020. And I'm very intrigued by that. I think that's awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. You're saying? Oh, I'd say I would, yeah, I, I wouldn't. One thing that you have to do when you're creating a course is you want to do enough market research to make sure it's worth your time to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, I've done quite a bit of research and blogging isn't going anywhere. And that's, that's kind of what I've realized from my research. So I'm going to go ahead and, and create a course on it. I love it. So me, I, I, think, I think I'm the smart guy in the room where I tell people that email isn't going anywhere. It's like, you know what you're doing? But again, blogging is the same thing, apparently. It's like there's things where people might assume have gone, you know, transition but it sounds like there there's a lot of value there so that's pretty awesome yeah again the value of the blog is how many email subscribers you can get so you try mm. to cast a wide net out there and get people's emails so that you can continue to market to them as much as you can awesome um chris you've given so much value and i've, I've kept you longer than i was expecting to thank you for hanging in there um no i guess la last question i would have for you is um you know if, if Anything that we haven't covered already, is there, is there a top piece of business advice that you would just want to impart on people listening that I just didn't get to with my questions? Um, I would probably say fail fast, you know, mm. so um, throw something out there, see what happens. Um, another quote, you know, I'm full of quotes. One of my favorite quotes is, do something now that your future self will thank you for. So if you can create something and throw it out there. It might not work, but then it'll show you, okay, let me try it a different way. 
and let me try it a different way. And eventually you're going to get it and then you're going to get good at it. And then maybe a year from now, 10 years from now, you can look back and be like, you know, I'm glad I at least tried because if I didn't, I would be stuck in the same mold that I'm here in now. And I, I'm not trying to keep dropping the, 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 uh, the shadow the mold pun, but that's another example right there. I'm still yeah, stuck man. in the same mold and it's the cookie cutter mold, you know, that everyone is trying to use. And does it work? Yeah, but it takes 50 years for it to work, you know? So why don't you try something else? Um, when I try to teach people how to get started, sometimes they'll say that, uh, oh yeah, you might have to blog or work or, or YouTube or whatever for maybe four to six months before you start seeing a decent income coming in. And they're like, oh, four to six months, I can't believe that. I gotta work all that time and get no money. It's like, <laughs> yeah, perhaps, but what was your original plan to work a dead end job for 30 years and just hope that you have enough money and health to enjoy it when you retire? <laughs> At least my way takes a few months. Your way takes over 30 years. Yeah, <laughs> why don't you enjoy those 30 years? You know, you're gonna be working anyway. You might as well work for these three months and get things rolling. And do something um, that you enjoy doing too. Yes, amen to that. You know, so I love that you kind of like bring up the title of the show because honestly, Chris, you're the reason that I created the show. People like you that are thinkers that understand that there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's oftentimes a better way to skin the cat. And I'll tell you when I, I did the Todd McFarlane interview not too long ago, um, that was this huge dream for me because I, I always looked up to the guy and I finished it and first I'm like, wow, I can't believe that happened. That was so awesome. And then I, you know, put it together. I'm like, oh my God, this is great. And a couple of days later, I'm like, I wonder if this is going to like, who's going to find me because of this? And you, I'm not sure the order of these interviews, but you're the first person that found me. And I'm so grateful and so happy <laughs> that we connected because in, in speaking to you and hearing your approach and hearing your philosophy and hearing how you go about things, this is one of the reasons why I have the show. I mean, I want to serve an audience, but I also like putting myself in a circle with really positive forward thinking people that are just on it. So I'm really, I'm so glad that you you found your way onto the show here. I'm so glad that you shared your wisdom and I'm so excited. And I hope my audience uh, seeks you out on the YouTube channel and all your other avenues. Cause I think there's a lot that you can still learn and a lot that you can still benefit. And thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, no problem, Andrew. It's been a real pleasure, man. I, 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 it's, it's been fun. It's been really fun. Thank you again, Chris. That was, uh, that was just awesome, man. I really appreciate you coming on. Again, apologies for this one being published a little later than I wanted to. But with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed that one as well. Uh, if you haven't done so already, now's the time to pull out that phone, hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, leave a quick, honest, written review. And of course, uh, you know, for those that want to check Chris out, I'm going to put the relevant links that he gave me in both the YouTube description of this video, if you're checking this out in video format, or if you're checking this out in audio, I'm going to leave those links in the audio portion of ShatteredAmodePodcast.com where this episode resides. Also, quick final reminder, if you haven't checked out my book and you want to, you can go to LastLawOfAttractionBook.com or you can check out my YouTube channel, which is YouTube.com slash Andrew Cap. With that said, again, we're getting closer and closer to episode 100, so we got a lot more awesome guests on the way. Feel free to check back in soon, and I will see you then. Thank you for listening to Shatter the Mold at www.shatterthemoldpodcast.com. My name is Andrew S. Kaplan. My name is Andrew S. Kaplan, and it's time to shatter the mold.